Hello friends, welcome to another video of Hybrid Academy. As we all know that these days internet existence is very very important and the only way to have your own existence on the internet is by having a website. Now this website can either be of your business, this website can be of your individual, this website can be of any organization. But in any ways having your own website over the internet is very important. So today we will learn what exactly is a website what all things are required for a website and what are all the contents related to the website. So let's move forward. What is website? Like a book, it has multiple pages and together they form a book. Similarly, a website is a collection of publicly accessible and interlinked web pages that share a single domain name. So to explain this further, if we have a set of web pages which are interlinked with each other and they are also publicly accessible to everyone through a name like www.yahoo.com, www.google.com. So all these are actually websites and all these pages constitute to a single website like multiple pages of a book form a book. Similarly, multiple pages form a website. Any individual, group, business or organization can have a website to serve variety of purposes. At times, a website is also known as web presence or simply a site. Now let's know what are the types of website. Now majorly we segregate the websites into two different divisions. One is a static website and the other one is a dynamic website. So as a layman, if you wish to understand, a static website is a stationary or a fixed website in which making changes is not at all easy. So once the website is made, every time you want to make a small minor change, you have to contact your developer, you need to contact the designer of the website and they will make the changes through the code. So this becomes a static website. Usually very small organizations who just need a web existence, just need a place where they can show their services, their products for once and their contact information, they prefer going for static website. Now another reason behind this is that comparatively static websites are much cheaper. You don't have to pay much to get a static website and usually these websites have four to five pages maybe like home page about us their products their services maybe a gallery and contact us so this is a basic layout of a static website the advanced version of a static website is a dynamic website in a dynamic website you have the capability to take actions you have the capability to update edit or remove or even change the data within the website now this change can be related to the data, this change can be related to the products and these, this change can be related to the services you are providing. So a dynamic website is capable of doing all these things. Now let's move further into this. Now this is the structure of a static website. When we send a request to the web server using any of the browsers, it can be Chrome, it can be Edge, it can be Firefox. Opera or even Safari, we just send a request to the web servers to please open a website. Now this web can, can be any website like www.redif.com or www.yourbusinessname.com. So once we type that in the browser and we press enter, this browser sends a request to the web server to show this or to open this website. Now this web server may contain multiple websites. It can be hundreds, it can be thousands of websites on that web server. This web server searches for that website which we have asked for, gives a response with the website and it shows us that static website. This is very simple path, very simple thing. Although it goes through multiple hops or multiple, I would say again, servers and then reaches our web server and from there the web server responds and the website opens. Whereas in case of a dynamic website, this process becomes a bit typical. This is the architecture of a dynamic website. Now here if you see, apart from the web browser and apart from the web server, we have few more elements like content management system, database, users, etc. So in this case, here also, we send a request to the web server to show a dynamic website. Now, if you go by the name, the name is exactly similar to the static website like we have. So it can again be www.anything.com. Now once you send this request to the web server, web server now goes back to CMS. 
This CMS is a content management system which actually manages the content of the website. So web server first looks out for the website which you have searched for and once it is available then it looks for the content management system which tells what information has to be shown and what not to be shown. Now this information comes from the database. So again third entity where it gets communication is from the database where it tells you that this information has to be shown. This again comes back to CMS gets filtered over there which gives the response to web server and web servers finally gives you a response that this is the website you are asking for or the user is asking for. Now to manage these dynamic websites we have few CMS users which can be of different levels maybe admin, maybe a editor, maybe a someone who is just managing the products or person who is just managing the services or maybe a person who is managing the orders. So these CMS users manage different sort of information from the database using CMS and whatever information they would like to show or they would like to make visible on the website that fil gets filtered to the CMS and then it is visible to the browser. Now as you can see that there are multiple elements involved in this, there are multiple entities plus apart from the website, apart from the static front-end website, we also require a CMS which is a software which manages our website. So the cost of this website goes a little up. Bigger organizations which have huge data or websites who wish to sell products online or websites who wish to sell services online, they basically use such, uh, such websites which are known as dynamic websites. Very good example of such dynamic websites can be Amazon, Flipkart or even any other website, local, maybe a courier website who are providing you information regarding the courier tracking and all. These are all dynamic websites because they are managed by a CMS in the backend. Moving further on this, what are the website elements? Now we will discuss a few things which are a part of almost each and every website. Starting off is with the domain name. Now this domain name is actually the name of the websites which ends with .com, .in, .org, .net and many more. Nowadays there are so many extensions available, this .com and .in is known as extension and these days so many extensions are available that you can actually customize your website name as per the extension also. So for example, if you are having a parlor, so maybe you can have the name of the parlor as the front end. So www.parlornname.parlor is also available. If you have a hospital, so www.hospitalname.hospital is also available. Initially we started with very few extensions like .com, .in, .us. Nowadays it is, the list is huge. So almost every business has a separate extension available. But still the most popular one is .com, which was actually initially made for the commercial websites. Apart from this, we have .in which refers to India, we have .org which refers to organizations, we have .net which refers to network or network related uh, businesses or organizations, we have .gov which is for government websites, we have .gov.in which is for Indian government websites and so, so many of them are there. Now this is the name of the website. So once we type in the name www.websitedave.com this goes to the web server and now this web server looks out for the website which is saved on that. So that's the second entity which is required for a website is the web server. In technical language you call this hosting which actually hosts the website which provides us the option to upload our website and keep it safe on the server so that it is available globally and should be available 24 by 7. If I run a website from my own computer or from my own laptop it might not be available 24 by 7 as soon as I shut down my laptop it will not be available globally and suppose my internet goes down again it will not be available globally. So just to make it available 24 by 7 and that too in all the global locations we use a web server which is backed by multiple things by power backup, by internet backup, by storage backup, by so many things that it is always up and running 24 by 7. So if anyone tries to access a website, he just types in the name in the browser and this goes to the web server. Now this web server is on 24 by 7 so it responds to that request providing the website. Now as I told you before, to save the information related to the website or to save huge data or humongous data which may be of your customers, which may be related to your products, your services or anything, we use an entity called database. This is actually a repository 
where all the data is saved. So that's the database. Now, to build up this website or to design or develop this website, few languages are used. Now, the very basic starting of these languages is HTML, which is Hypertext Markup Language. And this language is the base of all web development languages. So using this language, we actually design or develop the website. Apart from this, we have so many other languages. One of them is PHP, which is very popular. And this helps to convert this normal static website, which is made in HTML into a dynamic website. Going further, we have IP address. Now, as we all know that computers and servers, these are all digital devices. They might not recognize the name of the website like www.something.com. So to recognize this further, every website has a numerical entity. It's like a roll number, you can say. Now, this numerical entity can easily be understood by the server. So every server has their unique IP address. And once we enter the name of the website, it automatically connects that name with the IP address. And with the IP address, it recognizes the server and then server responds to our request. So you can say that IP address is a unique numeric identification of the server. Usually when you connect to the internet, every computer which is connected to the internet has an IP address. Even right now, if you are watching YouTube on your mobile phone, that mobile phone will also have an IP address, which is again a unique entity at that particular instance. Now, because this is not a web server or your mobile phone is not a web server, so as soon as you disconnect and connect again with the internet, a new IP address is issued to you. But for that particular instance, in that particular location, that IP address is unique for you or a unique identification. Going further, we have a hyperlink. A hyperlink or simply a link is a digital reference of the data that can be accessed by clicking or tapping on a link. So usually when we open a website, there are so many texts or images or buttons available. When we click on them, they actually take us to a different resource, which can be a different page, which can be an image, which can be a video, which can be an audio, which can be anything. So that particular button or that particular text, which is clickable and we can click on that is known as a hyperlink in technical language. In layman's language, we call it a link. Last but not the least is the security certificate, which is these days very popular. And recently, most of the popular browsers have been that made this security certificate mandatory. Looking at so many spamming websites and looking at so many of security issues with the websites where people steal data through the internet, security certificates have been made mandatory by the browsers. Now, when you make a website, you also need to get a security certificate for that, that your website is secure. And if anyone opens your website, his system or his mobile phone would not be harmed in the website. So a security certificate is issued by an authority who actually scan your website, they test your website, and then they provide you a certificate that, okay, this website is secure this period of duration. Now this certificate can be of three months, this can be of six months, and the most it can be of one year. In fact, all these four entities have to be renewed over a period of time. Usually it's on annual basis. You can renew the domain, your web server, your web hosting, your security certificate, all these things on annual basis. And it's a recurring charge for the period of time you wish to run your website. Now suppose if I start my website today and after two years, I do not want to continue the same website, I would not renew that. So automatically the website will go down once my hosting and my domain name will expire. Now to understand just this further, the domain name, web server, database, programming languages, IP address, security certificates, and hyperlinks. These are the elements of a website. Last but not the least, what is the importance of a website? So one of the major advantages of having a website is that it is accessible anywhere by anyone and at any time. That is 24 by 7 into 365. So even during the non-business hours, customers can access your website and avail your services or, they can, or get information related to your services as per their need, which is one of the key elements in the importance of website. Hope you like the video. Thank you so much for watching this.